So here's an example of normal operating temperatures for a walk-in refrigerator with a TEV slash TXV. Now you'll notice we're not even talking about refrigerant types here because it doesn't matter whether you're using R22 or R134A or R407C, whatever it may be. It really doesn't matter. We're only worried about temperatures at this point. The only reason we take our pressure readings is to convert them over to temperatures. So in this example, this is a normal box. Remember, walk-in. We have a box temperature of 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The TXV is mounted right, the sensing bulb is mounted right here on the suction side. The line temperature is 35 degrees. Our outdoor ambient temperature is 95, and the line temperature and the condensing, uh, the line temperature of the condenser is 115 degrees. So first let's take a look at the suction side. This is, remember, this is normal. So we have a 35 degree box temperature with a 25 degree evaporator temperature. So this is the saturation temperature of the refrigerant in the coil, which is 25 degrees. To get your TD, you subtract the evaporator temperature as read on your gauges it in, and convert it to temperature to the box temperature, which is what you would read with your thermometer you have a, a temperature differential in the evaporator of 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you look on your technician rule of thumb, you will find that that is the average and normal TD for a walk-in refrigerator. Also, our superheat is 10 degrees. You get your superheat by measuring the line temperature at the sensing bulb. And then you sub from that, you subtract the 25 degree Fahrenheit evaporator temperature, and that gives you 10 degrees of superheat and that is our uh, rule of thumb. That is a good and normal superheat. Now let's take a look at the condenser side of the walk-in refrigerator. We have an outdoor ambient temperature of 95 degrees. Our line temperature entering the receiver, that's after it leaves the condenser, is 115 degrees. Now we will take a, let's look at the condenser split. The con condenser split in this example is the condensing temperature of the refrigerant, which is what you're going to be reading on your high side gauges, converting the pressure into temperature. We've converted it to 125. The ambient temperature or the air entering the condenser is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. The condenser split is the condensing temperature minus the ambient air temperature or the air fl flowing across the condensing coil to give you a 30 de degree split and that for the sake of this chapter is normal. Then we have a line temperature that you measure right here of 115 degrees. You subtract that from the condensing temperature and that's where you get your 10 degrees of subcooling and this is normal. The one thing I want to tell you is if this ambient temperature drops below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to have a little bit of a, an effect on your subcooling by increasing it and you have to take that into consideration and understand that in those um, cooler weather conditions. Also, uh, if the ambient temperature rises above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, it's going to start to degrade the system's capability to um, refrigerate properly. So anything above 95 degrees tends to fall outside of manufacturer's design. So that's something else to keep in mind. But for the sake of all of these troubleshooting examples, we're going to be working with a 95 degree outdoor ambient temperature.